Hey, welcome back to Bob's Two Car Garage. Now, a few months ago, we were asked to build this record room or a voiceover room at the church that we do a lot of work at. Could have bought this from companies that make them for about $20,000 for the one that we wanted. And we figured we could do it quite a bit cheaper. So stick around. I'm going to show you how we built our record room. Hi, my name is Bob and I love now the size of the room was about seven and a half by seven and a half by seven and a half feet tall so it was a custom deal we wanted to make it in the shop and then bring it in now we framed the whole thing with one by four pine rather than two by fours because we really didn't need to hold anything up the framing is really just there to hold the sound killing materials in place. Also, pine is quite a bit lighter than two by fours. And the room was being built outside and then brought in in sections. So in our case, lighter was better. We framed it more like you would frame a stage set or flats for a uh, movie shoot, except for we doubled up the studs and the cross pieces that are sometimes called toggles so that we had more to attach our sheeting to. We use staples for temporary positioning and then two and a half inch screws for final fastening of the framing. The first layer of sheeting was half an inch MDF ultralight, which really isn't that light, but we wanted to use it because it's very dense and we figured it would make a good sound blocker. Stapled, glued, and screwed that into position. Okay, so in order to square this up, we're gonna just barely let it hang over on one corner right here. I'm gonna start this corner we're going to work our way down the edge and as we go along make it all the same and we're going to use this sheet to actually uh, make sure the thing is square. So we're trusting this sheet of MDF to be square, which it is, close enough. So staple, again, stapling is just for positioning. We're going to come back after this and screw it down. All right, so I don't always trust myself for getting those screws in the right place, so I would draw mine. So this wall section is four feet wide and seven foot six inches tall. So we're gonna cut it off at the end because our MDF is a little bit oversized. Cut it off with a skill saw first close to where it needs to be. And then we're gonna trim it out with a router so we got nice flush edges on both, on all the sides, on all the edges. It sound better. So, here we go. This is getting filled up with insulation. Each layer of foam we glued in position with construction adhesive so that it would not wiggle around and we cut those pieces pretty close to perfect. We really didn't care what side went out as far as the insulation goes because these walls were all about making things quiet, not insulating from heat or cold. We used a lot of construction adhesive by the way, we bought a whole case of liquid nails. Okay, so when we're cutting this stuff on the saw stop table saw, it's got this conductive surface on it, which sometimes will set off the safety me mechanism on the saw stop. So we had to put it in the bypass mode so that it wouldn't set it off. And it would have set off because there's a little indicator here that says that there was contact made during the process. So if you're cutting this type of foam, 
on the saw stop, saw stop table saw. You gotta be careful, otherwise it's gonna cost you 70 bucks to buy a new cartridge and, uh, and an hour of putting things back together. All right, so we've got a layer of MDF, two layers of foam, and our final layer is gonna be a sheet of half inch plywood. So we're gluing up the edges and then we're gonna lay our plywood over the top. So we should have plenty of sound blocking capabilities here. And that is our goal. Right, and so that's how we're making our soundproof panels. They're not really soundproof, but they're sound resistant. We got a layer of MDF. We got two layers of different densities of foam. And we got a layer of plywood all glued and sandwiched together. It's going to work great. Okay, so this wall has a window in it. So we're framing it differently but we're gonna sheet it the same way. MDF on the bottom, couple layers of foam, then a plywood on the inside of the wall. Here we go. summarize and clarify what we're doing here to uh, block sound we got a layer of half inch MDF and then we got a layer of styrofoam insulation on top of that that's about two inches thick we got another layer of a denser foam that uh, is about uh, an inch thick and then on top of that, we got a half inch piece of plywood and that's gonna make up our wall. And then once we get the walls installed, we're going to put on the inside, the deadness sound, this rigid fiberglass insulation. So the theory is with all these different materials, we have different densities and that should block out different frequencies of sound. Think it's gonna work. Great. All right, so we cut a bunch of these strips out of NVF to trim out the edges of our ceiling and some of the walls at the corners and stuff like that. And then we're gonna take this little router right here. It has a rounding over bit on it. We're gonna round over this edge, make it look nice and pretty. To hold some of our corners together, we bought inch and a half aluminum angle and we pre-drilled the holes so that we wouldn't have to do so much drilling when we actually did the installation. I ended up making kind of a pre-hung window out of three quarter inch plywood and clear pine. It was yet to be determined what is gonna go on the outside of this room and so I made it a little bit wider so that we could accommodate whatever happens on the outside of this room eventually. Before we came in and did the installation, we did some pre-painting. Then we just brought everything into the studio and set it all up. Each piece was a little bit different because of our custom size, so we did number them all so that we wouldn't be too confused when we got in here to put things together.
in the top corners, we use that aluminum angle. And we actually use these little metal pieces to hold things together temporarily until we added our wood strips. Now these six inch wide wood strips are what really hold this thing together. And we use them inside and outside and screw them to the flats that we made. We use those wood strips on the ceiling as well. On the outside, we wanted the insta installation to look a little bit cleaner. So we cut these wood strips out of MDF, rounded it over with the rounding over bit on our router, and then pre-painted it. Still looks kind of unfinished here, I realize, but um, eventually they'll figure out what they want to do on the outside. So all around the edges and down the middle of, uh, of all the walls here, we need to put in some filler strips so that we can attach our uh, rigid fiberglass ins insulation to that. So that's what we're doing right now. We're screwing on a bunch of strips of wood so we have something to screw to and so that it's even all the way around. Okay, so we're at the point where we're putting the insulation in here. And again, we're using this uh, rigid uh, fiberglass insulation that has a fabric attached to the outside. And uh, we made a little holder upper for getting these ceiling pieces in. We're using these um, oh, yeah. cabinet screws with big fender washers on them for holding it up to the ceiling. And it's working out really well. It's attaching nicely, pulling up well, and it's sounding better and better all the time. Now cutting this fiberglass insulation, this rigid fiberglass insulation that's on the inside was a bit of a learning process. At first, we just used a circular saw. But we found that it was jamming up the saw. The fabric that's on the outside of the stuff uh, that encapsulates the fiberglass the fibers got caught in the saw and so it just didn't really work that well so we ended up just using a really sharp uh, utility knife and we even used a hunting knife and in some cases we just use one of these little flip out saws and cut it out that way and that worked fine but it was a bit of a challenge at first i'm having richard cut out the insulation around the doorway here He's got way more patience than I do, and he's so I know he's gonna do a better job. And I don't mind waiting at all. Woo. Window. Now this glass window, one of my favorite features, <clears throat> went like this. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice looking window, eh? Now the doorway we framed with three quarter inch plywood. Again, just like the window. And we used some, I cut some MDF to make some jams and painted it up to make it not look nice and pretty. They don't want actually a door here yet. And I don't know why, but they don't. But it is ready for a door. So if they want to add one later to make it even more soundproof. They got door jams. All right, down here in the corner of the room, we need a place to pass through cords and stuff. So we made another little kind of pre-hung window sash. Not really a window sash, it's a, a hole, but anyhow, it looks cool. And this is gonna, we cut a hole in here with uh, actually with a just a jigsaw and a, 
and uh, Ginsu saw. I don't think it's called a Ginsu saw. I think it's called something else. But anyhow, it's one of those little uh, funny saws. And uh, then we're going to pop that in. There we go. This is what I'm calling the Ginsu saw right here. I'm not sure what they call these things, but they were, oh, it's pull saw. That's what it is. Anyhow, they were great in certain situations. So in order to make this window, I cut myself a, just a three quarter by three quarter inch piece of pine, rounded off the edge with the router. So it's got a nice clean looking profile. Spray painted it with some flat bat black spray paint and i'm gonna nail this along the edges right here or along one end gonna hold it a couple inches back from the outside of the room so that if they want to do anything on the inside here they'll have room to uh, hang a curtain anyhow i'm gonna nail on this trim right here set in the glass and then nail another piece of trim on the outside it's gonna make this room very quiet we went out and bought this special piece of plate glass. It's two pieces of eighth inch plate that are laminated together. It's supposed to be really good for stopping sound. So that's gonna be our window. You can see actually what we have here are two pieces that are glued together somehow. I think there's a, a layer of special glue in between them. Not sure exactly how they made it, but a glass ex expert told me that it was gonna do a good job, so I'm trusting him. And this, now I get to use my little suction handle thingies that I've never got to use one of these gizmos before, so I guess I need to trust the science on this. This is not one of the better quality ones, so that's why I'm not sure I can trust it that much, but they do make some that are pretty much foolproof, and these aren't them. Oh, looky there, it works. Yeah, I'm not sure I trust it. Uh. Well, that actually worked out pretty well. They work. It does kind of scare me using this larger finish uh, nailer around the glass here, but I'm being really careful, so we're hoping for the best. I'm not going to break any glass, I hope. There it is, nice solid piece of glass to stop all that unwanted sound. Way better than plexiglass. Plexiglass vibrates quite a bit, and so that's gonna cause some uh, noise problems. And also, plexiglass is really expensive right now, so this was $145. Not bad for a nice, almost soundproof, sound resistant window. And so that's how we built our record room or our voice over room. Sounds great in there. They like it a lot. I want to leave you today with this proverb that says, any enterprise is built by wise planning, becomes strong through common sense, and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. We had to do a little research to make the, to pull this one off, but they say it sounds really good, so I'm happy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.